Ladies and gentlemen, the 24th of April represents one of the most important votes that we as islanders may ever cast because it's about democracy. Democracy is the bedrock of any society that considers itself free. The ability of a society to control how it governs itself, to throw out one government in favour of another, is a profound power, especially when done peacefully through the ballot box. But for that power to be exercised properly and fairly, it is fundamental that every citizen has to have the same opportunity to have their voice heard fairly and equally. A society that silences certain groups or takes votes away from certain people cannot boast that it's truly free or democratic. It was just 100 years ago that women didn't have the right to vote, and they only achieved that after years of throwing bricks through the windows of Downing Street and Emily Davidson sacrificing her own life. And when they eventually were given the vote, it was on different terms to men. Men could vote at 21 years old, women could only vote at 30 years old. The struggle continued for another 10 years for equality. These problems only go away when we accept that people from all communities have the right to fair and equal votes. But what democracy does is it ultimately provides us with a better government because if it accurately and proportionately reflects the population, it will inevitably share the values that the people have and it can uh, represent and incorporate and consider criticism in the process rather than just silencing it. So the key principles to allow each person to have an equal vote are as follows. Every voter has to have the same number of votes. Every politician has to represent the same number of people and the system has to be simple and easy for voters to get to grips with. Of the three reform options, option A is by far the most democratic because it encompasses all of these principles, whereas options B and C encompass none of them. Option A will divide the island into six districts, respecting the parish boundaries, but with more or less equal population. Each voter will have seven votes for seven deputies, no matter where you live on the island. That is simple, it's fair, and it's democratic. No matter if you live in Gorey, St Juan's Village or St Ovens, you will have a fair and equal say, like all other islanders, on how Jersey is run. But think about those principles again. Option C is obviously not compatible with any of those, and, it, and that is exactly why we need change. Option C is Jersey's past, not its future. But none of these principles of democracy are found in option B either. The principle of equality and fair representation goes out of the window with option B. For a start, it's not as simple as option A because it continues with more than one type of states member with different roles, different mandates and elected for different purposes. That's not good for democracy or a cohesive states assembly. It also will have a situation where states members are not representing the same number of people. The Constable of St Mary has an electorate of uh, 1,340 compared to the Constable of St Helia with 26,500 people. This is fundamentally unfair. In St Mary, your vote is 20 times as likely to be the deciding vote than in St Helia. It's no wonder fewer people see the point in voting in St Helia because they know their vote isn't worth as much. Now, um, Mr Shenton has already said that um, under option B you will have the same number of votes. Well, this is only true in theory. In practice, it won't be the case because um, in practice, most constable elections are uncontested. Since 1999, over 70% of constable elections have been uncontested. Under option B in a reduced states chamber, the constable's workload as states members will increase and it's entirely feasible that this could put off people standing as constable, meaning we'd have even fewer contested elections. So if you live in a parish with an uncontested election, you get five votes, not six. The postcode lottery continues. It's not right in the 21st century that unelected people should be making our laws. Contrary to what Mr Shenton said earlier, option B, and for that matter option C, is in direct contravention of what is the Venice Commission. 
This is acknowledged not just by Senator Sir Philip Balash, who actually created option B, but it's acknowledged by the Electoral Commission's expert advisor, Dr Alan Renwick, whose exact words were, the option of retaining constables makes overall apportionment worse than at present and in multiple parish violates the, Ven the Venice Commission's criteria. It could not be more unambiguous. It will also not lead to more efficient government because some states members will be representing different amounts of people in different constituencies with a different number of votes. So if you live in St Mary, you're going to have a lot less competition to book to see your states member because you have to share them with much fewer people than somebody in St Helier does. St Helier will only have 11 states members, whereas District 5 parishes will have 9, despite having half the population of St Helier. How is that fair? This means, this means states members in St Helier will inevitably be more bogged down with constituent casework than their counterparts in District 5, who will have more members to spread the word around. This is not good for democracy and will create less efficiency. So, the most sensible and democratic way to solve the constable conundrum is to let the electorate decide on a case-by-case -case basis whether they want to be represented in the states by someone who is also the head of a parish. They may choose to vote them in, they may choose to, to decide they'd rather stay in the parish. That is the fairest and most democratic way to solve this. It's not fair to arbitrarily decide that all constables must be in the states. This puts people off coming forward for the position of constable, um, and it also contributes to the disconnect that some people feel um, between the parishioners and their constable if he or she is too busy in the states work, in the states work rather than focusing on the parishes. And in no parish is that more true than this very parish here. It's better for the parishes of the constable to be where they are most needed, which is in the parish. To sever the link now with the parishes provides us with an exciting opportunity to create two streams of administration flowing alongside each other, leading in the same direction but not intertwining. Should one stream become polluted, it would not poison the other. So, to those that want reform with these democratic principles, but are thinking of voting for option C because they don't like this particular vision of reform, there's a lot of good reasons for that, and I hear that. There's plenty of good reasons for wanting a state's chamber made up entirely of senators, or for wanting a state's chamber made up entirely of single member constituencies like MPs in the UK are. And uh, for people that want those uh, systems, when you look at option A, you can understand why they'd be disappointed. But I said that it's the principles that are more important than the aesthetics. Option A achieves equality between voters and that has to be progress and that has to make it more worth voting for than option C. But because it offers wholesale change, some have described option A as the radical option. But I say there is nothing radical or revolutionary about the principle of everybody having an equal vote. That's not radical, that's common <laughs> What is radical and what is revolutionary is suggesting in the 21st century, after wars have been fought to fight for our democratic freedoms, that we should go backwards and have a system that is less democratic. That is what's radical, not option A. The process of creating a fair democracy in Jersey will not fade away until every islander has a fair and equal say in how their island is run. Whether you live at Red Houses, First Tower or Sion, all islanders deserve a fair say, and until we get that, the calls for reform will become louder, not quieter, and that will be the case under both options B and C. This is a struggle that began um, not with the Clothier Report, not even with the 1948 reforms. It didn't even begin with the uh, petitions in the 1880s to, the, to Queen Victoria from the residents of St Helier asking for fair representation for town. This is a struggle that began on the 28th of September, 1769, when hundreds of ordinary islanders rose up in the Royal Square against the corrupt government when to do so was a capital offence. It was the reforms that followed this uprising that sowed the seeds of democracy in Jersey, but that flower has not yet bloomed and it won't bloom until everybody has an equal vote. So I say it's time for another uprising, this time a democratic one at the ballot box by voting in overwhelming numbers for option A. I urge islanders to embrace these principles of fairness and democracy in Jersey so we can have a real democratic future that we can all be proud of in this island. 
There's a lot to be proud of with Jersey. We have great community spirit, um, great natural beauty, but the one thing we don't have yet is a proper democratic system. So let's get that, and we can add it to the long list of things that we bore the hell out of people with when we go abroad, bragging about how wonderful Jersey is. Let that be one extra thing to add to the list. On the 24th of April, vote for option A.